Okay, Foot Lewis and the Sitter, part three. Okay, so we did in our last class, we talked about the Pesuke de Zimra. These are the songs of praises to Hashem that we say in the beginning of the prayers to put us in the mood for praying properly, right? Now, if one is in a rush and they come late and they want to reach the Pesuke, the main point is to get the Shmon Esrei together with the Tzibur, with the Minyan, so this can be skipped. But it should be said whenever possible, right? Unfortunately, many people skip it every day, which is a very big shame. On Shabbat, we add one more thing, the Nishmas. I want to turn to the Shabbat prayers. Turn to page 400, 401 in the English. This is added on Shabbat and the holidays. A beautiful, beautiful prayer. Nishmas kochai. This is, how we, this is, the, this is the, the, the diamond on the crown of the Pesukah de Zimra. The final touch. Nishmas kochai tevarech shimcho. May the soul of all living bless your name, Hashem our God. The spirit of all flesh shall glorify you. Your remembrance forever. From this world to the next world, you are God. Besides you, there's no other king, redeemer, who saves, savior, redeems us and saves us and, and sustains us and has mercy upon us at all times of trouble. There's no king besides you, the God of the first ones, the last ones, the God of all creatures, all generations, who's praised in all the praises. He rules his world with kindness, his creatures with mercy. He doesn't sleep, he doesn't slumber. He awakens those who are asleep, those who are slumbering. He makes the, deaf, the, the dumb speak. He frees the imprisoned, he lifts the fallen, he lifts up the bent. To you alone are we prayer. Now we come to a beautiful part. The bottom of page 401. If our mouths would be full of song like the sea, picture the ocean, and our tongues rejoicing like the waves, the waves in the ocean, and our lips full of praise like the expanse of the sky, the heavens, and our eyes brilliant like the light of the sun, next page, and the sun and the moon, and our hands be spread out like the eagles, and our feet light like the deer, right? Even if we were Superman, we would not be able to thank the Lord our God to bless your name thousands, 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 ten thousand times. The favors that you've done for our ancestors with us. Jewish history is from first. You took us out of Egypt, you redeemed us with slavery, right? In hunger did you sustain us. In spe- and, uh, in famine, you nourished us. In plenty, you sustained us. From the sword, you saved us. From the plague, right? From terrible sicknesses. How, how much have you saved us and you have not, your kindness has not left, forsaken us? Do not forget, forsake us forever. So what's the conclusion? Therefore, look at the continu- continuation. Therefore, the parts of the body that you put in us and the spirit and the soul that you have blown into our nostrils and the tongue that you put in our mouths, they shall praise and bless and laud and thank, right? And sanctify your king, uh, make you a king forever. Because every mouth shall thank you, and every tongue shall swear on your name, and every knee shall bow before you, and every backbone shall bow down before you, right, right, right? Every heart shall fear you, all our insides shall sing, our kishkis, our kishkis, our intenses, intenses have to thank you, right, right? Sing your name. As King David says, all my bones shall thank you. So we start off saying, it's impossible to thank God properly if we'd be like Superman. And a minute later we say, therefore the parts of our body will thank you. But isn't it a contradiction? A minute ago you said we were not able to, right? So I'll give you an analogy. Analogy. There was a rich man that found out about a certain poor man that was in jail on trumped up charges. So what did he do? He got a lawyer. They got him out of jail. Then he bought him a house. He got him a wife. He got him a job. He got him a car. He got him clothes. And he gave him everything he needed. And the poor man comes up to the rich man and says to him, thank you very much. He says, that's all you say? After everything he did for you, just thank you very much? Well, a minute, I'm not finished yet. Thank you very much, and thank you very much, and thank you very much. For the rest of my life, I'm not going to stop thanking you. Right, right? It would be impossible for us to properly thank God for all he's done for us, right? But our job in this world is thank you very much. That's just saying thank you. We thank God by studying Torah. We thank by doing mitzvahs, by doing, thing, but by doing the things we're supposed to do, right, right? But my, every part of my body constantly will thank you. My purpose in this life is to thank you, right? We take everything for granted, right? We imagine it's always supposed, always supposed to be like that, right, right? When something goes wrong, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? When things go right, of course it's supposed to be like that, right? Uh, that's not how it's supposed to be. We have to understand that everything we have is from Hashem. And therefore we praise Him constantly. And how does the Nishmas end? The Nishmas ends with the symphony orchestra. Look at the continuation over there. Um, page 404. Shochen Ad Moro, we, we praise our God for every right. Makalos, we have assemblies of myriads of the children of Israel. We will sing your praises. Uh, it's the ob- obligation of all the creations to thank you, to praise you constantly, constantly to praise you, constantly to praise you, right? Makalos literally means a, 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 a choir, right? right? An, or- an orchestra, right? 
I once had a very beautiful analogy. I think it's in the Dumna Magid, of a king who allowed his subjects to one day to take all they wanted from his tre- tre- treasure room. He opened up a treasure room for one day, from sunrise to sunset, they could all take whatever they want. So the whole people are lined up with their suitcases to take treasure outside the treasure until, until sunrise, right? And then the sun rises and the, and the gates open up. But right outside the treasure room is a symphony orchestra playing beautiful, haunting music. And everybody stops just for a minute to hear the music, right? And they go into a trance. And they can't, they're glued to their spot listening to the music. And the next group comes, and again, they stop for a minute and they listen to the music. And the next group, they're all listening to the music, and nobody goes into the treasure. One smart guy from the distance looks at him and sees what's going on. Nobody's going into the treasure. He takes a binoculars, see what's going on. So what does he do? He puts earplugs in his ears, puts stuffs a, a, hand, a handkerchief around his head, puts on a helmet, looks like a, <laughs> an astronaut, right, 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 right. <laughs> and he walks right past the grand into the treasure room, fills his suitcase with treasure, goes back home, comes back for another trip, back and forth, back and forth. Everybody's laughing at him, they're making fun of him, they throw rocks at him, right? He's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. His house is full of treasure, right, right? All of a sudden, it's sunset already, and the sun's about to go down, and all of a sudden, the band starts playing! Everybody wakes up the treasure! And then the gates close, too late, you missed the boat. Well, this guy sees the band stop playing, takes off his helmet, takes off his handkerchief, takes out his earplugs, goes over to the thing. I heard you guys play pretty well. Yeah, that's what they say. I'm sure you take a lot of money. Well, I got a lot of money. I got a house full of treasure. I would like you to come to my house now and play for me for the rest of my life. What's the analogy? What's the analogy? God puts us in this world, and we've got to get the treasure. That's the Torah. The real treasure, the real meaning. But we have the distractions, the physical pleasures. That's the band, right, right, right? And we get distracted by the band, and we forget to go and get the treasures. But a Jew stuffs his ears, right? He doesn't go after the physical pleasures. He keeps his eye on the ball. What's the most important thing? What's the most important thing is the pressure. More treasure, more treasure, more treasure, more treasure, right, right? And then in the end, he'll enjoy the pleasure for all eternity. That's the example, right? This is a picture of the beautiful band playing, singing God's praises, the Jewish people for all eternity, singing God's praises. That's the analogy over here. Okay, so that's the Pesuk of the Zimra. And we end up with the Ishtabach. We're on page 404. This is the Shabbos prayers. Ishtabach Shimcho Aluad Malkeinu. This is the blessing we say after Pesuk of the Zimra. May your name be praised forever, our King, the King, Godol, Kodosh, Melshwayim, Boris, heaven above, to you it is beautiful, song and praise, lauding and science, power, dominion, triumph, greatness, strength, praise, splendor, holiness, sovereignty, right? Baruch Ata Hashem, Kael Melech, Godol, Matish Bechos, he's great in the praises, Kael Odos, the God of thanks, the master of wonders, he chose the thanks of Dor, the, the songs of praise, Melech, Kael Chayel, the God who makes, makes live, give, life giver of the world. So we just finished the Pesukah Zimra, and now we begin the Shema. So go back to the weekday prayers, uh, turn back to page 84, 85 in English. Okay. So we're about to say the Shema. The Shema is a mitzvah from the Torah, right, right? We said before that it's a mitzvah from the Torah to pray every day, right? But anybody know where it says in the Torah to pray every day? Where do we learn prayer from? It's in the Shema. So if you have a you should serve God with all your heart. How do you serve God with your heart? Heart surgery? <laughs> what does heart mean, right? Well, we think of heart generally as the, uh, the source of the, uh, the emotions, right? But in the Tanakh, heart means the thoughts and the emotions, both emotions and thought, right? For example, it says in, uh, in, Sa- in Proverbs, it says, From everything that you guard, guard your heart. What does that mean, guard your heart? Put a filter in front of your mind, right? <laughs> right? Don't let all the garbage go in, right? You know, sometimes they tell us we brainwash people over here. Well, in or some we don't brainwash people, we dry clean. <laughs> right, 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 right. But I don't think it's such a bad thing to brainwash once in a while. I think the brain could use a little bit of washing once in a while. Not so bad. Not so bad to wash the brains once in a while. Right, 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 right. I know a guy who was very open minded. He was so open minded, you know what happened? His brains fell out. <laughs> don't be too open minded either. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, the heart means the soul, means the means the the, the mind and the emotions, right? To serve God with all your heart is prayer. Prayer is you're serving God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your emotions, right? That's the idea of prayer. But you can fulfill that for the Torah law. One prayer you say a day, you say, Mordani, you fulfill your obligation with the Torah law, right? The three times a day, that's from the rabbis, right? But the Shema is a mitzvah from the Torah to say twice a day. And before we say the Shema, the rabbis gave us two blessings before, 
and one blessing afterwards, both in the morning and in the evening, in my river, right? And the theme of these blessings is, I said before that in the Pesukah Zimra we saw two <coughs> themes, two ways we can come close to God. One way we can recognize God. One is through the Jewish people. One way is through, uh, is through, uh, is through uh, nature, right? The first blessing on the Shema is nature. We're, coming see, we're seeing God through nature. And the second blessing on the Shema is the Torah. And the third, which is after the Shema, is the Mashiach, with the salvation. We'll get to that later. Okay, so here with the, the Chazan says Kaddish, and we say Boruchu. Boruchu, bless Hashem, we bow down, because the main introduction to prayer is humility. Someone who thinks they're God's gift to the world cannot properly pray. You've got to be able to humble yourself. Humble your pride. Recognize you're standing before God and humble your pride. So, Boruch was Hashem, bless Hashem, I'm a Voirach. Everybody bows down. Boruch Hashem, I'm a Voirach. Now we begin the first of the blessings of the Shema. Boruch Hata Hashem, Olokeinu Melech Olam. So I said, when we have a number of blessings, one after the other, we just, it just says Boruch Hata, the first one, and the rest continue without saying Boruch. For example, the grace after meals, right? We have the first one that says Boruch, the others don't. If the first one says Baruch, the others don't. But Yotzer Or, he creates light. Uvore Choshech, and creates darkness. Ose Shalom, makes peace. Uvore Esakol. Now, this is based on a verse in Isaiah, but it actually changes it. The sinner changes it, because in the verse itself it says, Bore Ra, he creates evil. Things that we think are evil are actually God's creations. God created evil for a purpose. The purpose of evil is to eventually to dissipate and to see the truth. In any case, the sinner says Hakol, everything. So it talks about light. Interesting, on Shabbat, we had a, while we're talking, let's look at the Shabbat prayers. We see the Shabbat, we had a little bit more. This is actually the longest blessing in the Siddur, is the Yotzar on Shabbat. Because on Shabbat, we had, we had an addition. Skip ahead to page, um, page 408, 409 in the English. 408, 409 in the English. This is what we say on Shabbat. Hakol Yoducha, all will pray, will thank you. Hakol Yishapchucha, all will praise you. Hakol Yomru, all will say there's no one holy like Hashem. All will, will glorify you forever, creator of everything. The Lord who opens up every day the doors of the gates of the east. He opens up the windows of the sky. He brings out the sun. You see the vivid imagery over here. He brings out the sun in its place and the moon in its proper, proper place. And he lights up the world and those who inhabit it that he created it with mercy. He lights up the world and those who live upon it in mercy. In his goodness does he renew every day constantly the act of creation. It's not that God created the world one time and put it on automatic pilot. Every single day he desires there to be a world again. The king who's elevated above, he's praised uh, from the days of old. Master of the world, with great mercy, have mercy upon us. Master of our strength, the rock of our salvation, right? Shield of our salvation. There's no thing like you. There's no thing compared to you, right? There's nothing except you. There's nothing without you. Who is like you in this world? This is the world of comparisons, right? Enkerka. Uh, Erich means evaluations. This is the world of evaluations. What was the evaluating thing? It was a good lunch. It was a bad lunch. It was a good class. It was a bad class. The only thing that has no value is valueless is God, above value in this world. There's nothing besides you in the world to come. So you have this world, the world to come is after you die. There's nothing besides you in the days of Mashiach. When Mashiach will come, the first stage will be, the world will still be normal, but we'll go back to Israel, we'll build it up based on And there's nothing besides you compared to you in the resurrection of the dead. The final stage of Mashiach, when there'll be, uh, in this world, the heaven will be down here. Next page is Kel Adon. This is on Shabbat. This is the angels singing God's praise. Kel Adon al Kol Amasim. I'll skip that now. This is just the, the angels and the. It's it's, it's a s poem about how the all the luminaries, right? The sun, the moon, the stars are all doing God's will. Second paragraph we say on Shabbat. Leel Asher Shavas on page four hundred ten. 411 in English, the God who rested from all his deeds on the seventh day, he goes up and sits on his crown, on his glory. Glory for the day of rest. Pleasure is called Shabbos. The prayer for the seventh day, the praise for the seventh day, God rests from all his deeds, all his actions. And they say, Mitzvah Shil, Yom Shabbos, is good to praise Shem. Therefore, praise God. Beautiful song shall they give the king, the master of everything, who brings rest to his people and his holiness on the Shabbos day. Okay, so that's on Shabbos. Now get back, turn back to page 84, 85 in the English, back to the weekdays. So this is a blessing on light. He lights up the earth and those who live dwell upon it in mercy. In his goodness does he renew every day the act of creation. How great are your deeds, Hashem, 86. They're all done with wisdom, right? The earth is full of your, of your possessions. The king who's glorified above He's praised in his glory from the days of old. Master of everything, have mercy upon us. 
kill Baruch, you have Aleph base of your kill Baruch, Gadol, Daya, Echina, Chal, you go through the entire Aleph base. Beneficent one, fashion honor for his name, luminaries, and finally we say, on the light that he gave us. So we started off with the light, the sun and the moon. Now we're going a little bit higher. What's above the light, the sun and the moon? We come to the angels. We're on page 86. May our rock be blessed, our king and our redeemer, who created holy ones. May your name be blessed forever, our king, who made his, his ministering angels, right? His messengers are all standing on the highest place, and they proclaim, right? You can hear them. They proclaim with, with, with awe together the words of the living God and the king of the world. They're all beloved. They're all clear. They all have clarity. The angels see everything clearly, right? Right. Therefore, they don't have free will. Right? Do I have free will to jump off the roof? Yeah. Simply yes, but I know I'm so clear what's going to happen if I do that it takes away my free will, right? Angels can sin also, but they, they have such clarity that it doesn't occur to them, right? right? Brurim, they're clear. They're all mighty. They all do with awe and fear the will of the Creator, right? And they open up their mouths with holiness and purity, with song and with, uh, and with uh, him. They praise, breast, glorify, revere the God, the name of the God. And they all accept upon themselves the yoke of the kingdom of heaven from each other. That's what Shema is all about. And they give each other permission to sanctify each other. And they say, Kadosh, 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 holy, holy, holy. Hashem Tzivakot. So I say, the angels can only say God's name after saying three words. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. We say God's name after two words. Shema Yisrael. We're on a higher level. The whole world is full of his honor. This is the Kedusha. Higher and higher. Holy. They jump on the table. Kadosh! Somebody jumping even higher. Kadosh! Kadosh! Hey! Next page. And the Ofanim. Ofanim means they literally wheels, right? These are angels in the shape of wheels. The prophets saw all the angels, right? This is from the prophets we know this. And the holy animals in the shape of animals, right? With great noise, they rise up to the Srafim. Srafim are the burning ones. The ones that were so close, they burn up. They go up, they burn up, they come down. Ah, right? Opposite them, and they all pray, Baruch, Kivot Hashem, Im Komo. Blessed is the honor of Hashem from His place. Now, if you want to know what the meaning of the Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh is, the... In the Avolat Sion, at the end of the prayers, we have Avolat Sion. Avolat Sion, it brings the Aramaic translation. Turn to page 154. 155 in the English, right? Here, in the Avolat Sion, we bring the Aramaic translation of these two verses. Kadosh, 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 Hashem Tzivakos, God of whole, the host, the whole world is full of His honor. Mekablin Damon Dame Yomrim. They receive permission from each other and they say, Kadash Hashmei Maroma, holy in the most exalted heaven. Elah Beis Shechinte, the abode of his presence. Kadesh Ara, holy is on the earth. Ovad Gevurte, the product of his strength. Kadesh La'olam, holy forever and ever. Ba'olmi Almayah, for all times. Hashem Sivakos, Mali Yolkala, Rezivi Kora. The whole world is full of the great, of his, of his great oral, the radiance of his glory. And then a wind lifted me up. This is the prophet talking. And I heard behind me a sound of great noise. This is Isaiah. Baruch Kavod Hashem Im Komo. Blessed the honor of Hashem from His place. And the wind blew me up. I heard behind me the sound of a power. Blessed the honor of Hashem from the place of His, of his presence. It means the Beis Hamikdash. That's the place where it's referring to. Hashem Yim Loch Li'alam Ve'ed. Okay, back to the Baruch Hashem. Back to page 88. Lekel Baruch Ni'imos Yitainu. To the blessed God do they give sweet melodies, the angels. Kel Chai V'Kayim. To a living God, Zemiros Yameru. They sing songs, right? They proclaim praises for real. And now we're going to above the angels. What's above the angels? We started off with the sun and the moon, right? The stars. Then we got to the angels. And above the angels is the spot where God runs the world. This is the highest spot. Where God makes all the decisions, right? This spot. Because he alone does greatness. He makes new things. He's a master of war. He sows kindness. He makes salvations flourish. He creates cures, right? That's the start where God runs the world, right? He's too awesome for praise, a Lord of wonders. And his goodness, he renews every day the act of creation, as it says, to make the great, great lights for his kindness. And we end up with light, a new light shall you put on Zion. And may we all merit to see it. Baruch Hashem, Omar, so made lights. What's that referring to? That's a spiritual light, right? Right? There's the physical light, the light of the sun, the moon, the light of the electric light, and then there's the spiritual light. Right, right, right. And then we think, you know what light is? Light is the light of the sun and the moon. And we call the spiritual light light because it's similar to it. That's not true. It's the other way around. You know what real light is? The spiritual light. I see the light, right? 
when we learned Chumash Bereshit, God created the light of creation that you could see from one world to the other, one end of the world to the other, and He hid it away for the righteous in the world to come. And where did He hide it? In the Torah. When you learn Torah, you see the light. But that's the real light, right? Look in the art scroll, Shir Hashirim, in the introduction, he says, Shir Hashirim is a love song between God and the Jewish people. And it's the, the analogy is a man and a woman. So we think, you know what love is? Love is a man and a woman. And the analogy is God and the Jewish people. No, it's the other way around. Real love is the love between God and the Jewish people. That's love, right? And the love of a man and a woman is similar to that. We call that love as well. That's the analogy. So the first blessing is God seeing God in nature and the light. So that's the chakras. I want you now to turn to Myriv and see how the first blessing for the Shema. And Myriv also deals with nature. Turn to page 256, 257 in the English, right? This is Myriv. We start off with the Borchu. And the first blessing of Myriv, we're in a spaceship up in heaven. Baruch Atah Hashem, we got page 257. Baruch Hashem, Hashir Bidvoro Ma'ariv Arovim, with his word does he bring the evening? Bechachmo, wisdom, Paseach Sharem, did he open up the gates with understanding? Does he change the times? And he changes the seasons, right? And he puts an order of the, the stars in their spot, right? In the sky, each, each, each star has a spot to be in. He creates day and night, he rolls light from darkness and darker from light. You know, you're the Kotel Friday. You're there when it's light, and all of a sudden it gets dark, right? right? You leave, it's dark. You go to the Kotel, Shavuot's night. You start off when it's dark in the morning, and you get it when you finish, it's light, right? right? Light before darkness, dark before light. <laughs> and he makes the day pass, and he brings the night. And he separates, next page, between day and night, Hashem, Sevokol Shemo, Kelchai V'Kayim, living God, Tomin Yimloch, he should rule over us. We're up to Rosh Hashanah, right? Ruling up. Baruch HaTah Hashem, Hama'ariv Arovim, it brings the evening. So the first blessing is, God reveals himself in nature. When you go and you see nature, you see God. That's the first blessing. Back to the morning prayers. And the second blessing deals with the Torah. Back to page 88, 89 in the English. Go back to page 88. The second blessing of the Shema. And this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Avorabo Avtana. An everlasting love. Whenever we talk about the Torah, it's love. God gave us his Torah out of love. We love God through studying his Torah. It's an emotional thing, you know. We just experience Simchas Torah, right? Right. Now, my my sons are home for Sukkot, but they go to the yeshiva to spend Simchas Torah with their rabbis, right? All the rabbis go to the yeshiva. They dance with the Torah with their rabbis, right? Can you imagine a university, right in the middle of their vacation, all the students and professors go back to the school, they take their textbooks, they start dancing. Right? Can you imagine? Such a thing? <laughs> Impossible, right? <laughs> no way. <laughs> Because right? for them, it's an intellectual proof. It's an exam. I want to make uh, intellectual. I want to make money. Right, right, right. For us, Torah, it's also intellectual. No one's saying Torah is not intellectual, right? But it's also emotional. We love the Torah. An everlasting love. Have you loved us, the Lord your God? A great loving. Have you, uh, have you uh, desired us, our Father, our King, page 88, right? For the sake of our ancestors who trusted in you and you taught them the laws of life, so shall you have compassion and teach us. Our Father, the Father, our merciful one, have mercy upon us, right? See, we had that in the previous blessing also. It also have a mercy upon us, right? I mean, here we're asking God to have mercy to teach us Torah. What was the mercy in the first blessing? That we should be able to see God in nature. You know, there are people who are capable of looking in a telescope and looking in a microscope and still believe that life is an accident, <laughs> right, right? We accidentally evolved on a one cell amoeba and nobody knows where we came from, right, 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 right? They still believe that, right? You have to be able to see God in nature as well, right? That's what we're asking God for mercy. And here we're asking God for mercy that we should be able to study Torah. Have mercy upon us, put in our hearts to understand, to be smart, to listen, to learn and to teach, to keep and to fulfill all the words of your Torah and love. And then we come to a higher level. Light up our eyes in your Torah. May our hearts cling to your commandments. May our hearts be one to love and fear your name. Right? So every single morning we ask God, give us, open up our hearts to understand your Torah. Right, right? So the analogy goes of the poor man that wanted to marry off his children. He had no money. But you remember he had a friend from yeshiva named Chaim. They were very friendly many years ago. And Chaim was a big businessman. So he calls him up on the phone. Hello, Chaim. Remember me, Yosef? Yeah, I remember you, Yosef, right, right? You know, I have a hard time. I have to marry off my kids. Maybe, oh, no problem. Come to my office tomorrow, 9 o'clock. I'll take care of everything you need for the wedding. Next morning, 9 o'clock, doesn't show up, right? Doesn't show up, right? But at 12 o'clock, he calls up again. 
Chaim, remember me, I'm Yosef. I have to marry off my kids. I need some. No problem. Why don't you come at 9 o'clock? No problem. Come tomorrow. I'll take everything. I have a caterer prepared for you. I have a band. I have everything. Just come tomorrow night. Next morning, 9 o'clock. Does the show again. <laughs> but at 1 o'clock, he calls up. Remember, you're crazy. Remember, yeah, you're crazy. <laughs> come. <laughs> We're laughing. It's funny, right? Right? That's us. Everyone is a God, a father, a king. Have mercy on us. Open up our minds to study your Torah. Help us understand your Torah. Okay, I'll give you, just open up the book. I'll give you all understanding. We don't crack a book. We don't crack a book, right? Have the next day. We don't crack a book. Please, God, give us understanding. I'll give you understanding. Open up the book. No, no. I'll give you, just open up the book, right? <laughs> Every day we ask, give us, we don't open up the book, right? Open up the book and study Torah. God will give you all the understanding, right? Light up our eyes in your Torah. May our hearts cling to your commandments, right? Our hearts be one to love and fear your God. We should not be embarrassed forever. Lo nevosh the alam va'en. Right? And this is as far as it says, lo kalem, lo kashel. We should not be embarrassed. We should not be humiliated. We should not have a downfall the olam va'en. That's in the as far as. You know, it's interesting. In the grace after meals, we also say the lo nevosh lo right? And there it doesn't say lo kashel. We should not have a downfall. Right? But there are some texts to do. So I wanted a fascinating story about this. Fascinating story. The story was about a chassid who was in Hebrew University Library doing research in the library with the books over there. They have a lot of whole, many, many holy books in the library at Hebrew University, right? While he was there, he brought along a sandwich, and he was eating a sandwich. And then he started benching, and he was saying the grace out of the meal. He was saying very loud. He said, Lo nevo, shlo nekalem, lo nekashel, yolam va'ed. We should not have a down for all eternity. There was a secular librarian there goes over to him, she says to him, you know, first of all, you're not allowed to eat here. <laughs> Second of all, you're deserving anyway with your wrenching. Keep pipe down. And third of all, you're not even saying it right. Because <laughs> I may not be religious, but I come from a religious background, and it says in the, in the prayer book, it says in the, in the Grace After Meals, lo nevosh, lo nekalem. It doesn't say lo nekashel in, in the Grace After Meals. She said, there, there are some texts that do have it. Said, Let's see. You know, there are about 50 different sitters in the Hebrew University Library. They looked at every one. They didn't find one that said like he said. He was very embarrassed. He said, you know what? I'll go to Mea Sharim, the bookstores. I'll find one that says what I said. I'll send it to you, okay? Give me your address. So he gave him his address. He went to Mea Sharim. He looked until he found one. He found this that said what he said. He bought the sitter, right? He put it in a box. He, he put a uh, marker on that page. And he underlined, Lo nikashel yolamved. We should not have a downfall forever and ever, right? right? And he sent it to the mail. And he forgot all about it. About a half a year later, he gets an invitation to a wedding. Sephardi wedding. He didn't know the groom, he didn't know the bride. But he figured maybe one of my students, I had years ago, I didn't remember the name. He happened to be in the neighborhood where the wedding was anyway that night. So I'll drop in and see who it is. He goes in and see a Sephardi Shiva boy who's getting married, right? And he didn't know him, he didn't recognize him, never met him before in his life. Must be some mistake. He's about to leave. All of a sudden, the bride comes in and she calls him, Rabbi, Rabbi, I sent you the invitation, right? You may not recognize me, but I recognize you. Do you remember the time you went to the Hebrew University Library and I was the librarian over there, right? And you sent me the sitter, right, 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 right? Now I'm marrying Yeshiva guy. It's all because of you. <laughs> <laughs> I was engaged to marry an Arab and I couldn't decide if I should marry him or not. And he got discussing with me. He says, tomorrow morning, right? At nine o'clock, either you call me when getting married or it's all over. And it was 9 o'clock, she decided, okay, I'm going to call him. He's a nice guy, picks up the phone, about to call him. All of a sudden, there's a ring knocking on the door. Mail comes. Opens up the mail. What could it be? Box. What could it be in the box? Opens up the box. A sitter. Who sent me a sitter? With a mark. Lo nikasheh li olamad. We should not have a downfall for all eternity. Wow. <laughs> At that point, she started to go to classes, and she ended up becoming religious, and she's marrying the Shiva guy, and she sent him an invitation. True story. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> We should not have a downfall forever. When you're great and holy name, do we trust? Let's rejoice and be happy in your salvation. And bring us Hashem in peace. Page 90 from the four corners of the earth. And bring us heads up to your land. Because you're a God who does wonders. You chose us from all the nations. And brought us close to your name. For, to thank you. And to make you alone with love. You chose his people Israel with love. The love is the Torah. How do you chose us with love by giving us the Torah? So the second blessing is Torah. And let's go to, to Myriv. We'll see the second blessing in Myriv. also Torah. Turn to page 258. 259 in the English. 258. Avas olam basis. Again, love. 
an everlasting love. The house of Israel, your people, have you loved? You gave them Torah and mitzvahs, laws and justices. Have you taught you? Have you taught us? Therefore, when we go to sleep, when we get up, we'll talk about your laws. We go to sleep, think about Torah, get up, think about Torah. We'll be happy with the words of your Torah and your commands forever because that's our life and the length of our day when the doctor takes a stethoscope. Hear your breathing. What should he hear? Torah, Torah, Torah. <laughs> that's the life and the length of our day, right? <laughs> and we'll busy ourselves day and night in the Torah. And your love do not remove from us forever. Baruch Atah Hashem. Oh, I'm going to So both blessings, the theme is Torah and the, the, the adjective to, uh, to describe it is love. Hashem loves us by giving us the Torah, right? right? Torah is beautiful. We love it. It's beautiful. It's delicious. Okay, now we get to the Shema. Back to page 91. Back to page 91. We have a mitzvah to say six words with a bright intention. And it seems like an easy mitzvah, but it's actually one of the hardest mitzvahs in the Torah, right, right? If you don't say these six words with the right intention, you don't fulfill your obligation, right? So the first thing is, Kel Melech Ne'aman. Okay, that's what we say. We say the Yechidus, we might have the number of words. Shema. What does Shema mean? Listen, hear, pay attention, understand, believe. Yisrael, Israel, the Jewish people. We're connecting ourselves to the Jewish people, wherever they are. Hashem. So this is God's name. So we said in the beginning of the class, whenever it says God's name, yud Hey and vav we pronounce it Adonai. But you're supposed to think two things. You're supposed to think yud Hey and vav is a contraction of three words. Hoya, hove, yeh, was, is, and will be. And Adonai is Adonakol, master of everything. So... You're supposed to think this every time you say God's name, but you don't fulfill your obligation of Shema if you didn't think it during the first verse of the Shema and the first blessing of Shema Nesre. Adon, Akol, master of everything, was, is, and will be. That's when you say Hashem. And Elokeinu, our Lord, you're supposed to think He's the Moshe, He's the ruler. Shofet, He's the judge. But Baal Kol is the omnipotent, the, most power, the master of all power. Hashem is our God. Hashem, I don't call. Master of everything. Echad is one. Heaven above, earth below. We close our eyes. Heaven above, earth below. Four corners of the earth. That's hinted in the word Echad. Aleph is one. Ches is eight. Seven heavens and one earth. And Aleph is four. Four corners of the earth. Heaven above, earth below. Four corners of the earth. And we're supposed to think, I'm ready to give my life for God. I'm accepting upon myself the yoke of the kingdom of heaven. What does it mean, the yoke? Not egg yoke. Y-O-L-K. Y-O-L-K. Woke, right? When a cow, when an ox pulls the plow, you put a yoke around his neck and it's connected to the, to the plow or to the wagon, right? A yoke. We have what's called a red heifer. The red heifer is a red cow that took off the contamination of, a dead, of, of, of touching a dead body. It does not apply today, right? But the red heifer could not have carried a yoke. Meaning, you put anything on its back, you put a, a feather on its head and it carries it for you, it's disqualified. But what if the red heifer had a sore in his back, and you put a bandage on. A heavy bandage. That's not a yoke. Why not? Because it's for the benefit of the cow. It's not a yoke. Say it was cold outside. You put a blanket on, on the red heifer. A heavy blanket. It's not, if it's for the benefit of the cow, it's not a yoke. If it's for my benefit, it's a yoke. You got that point? So if someone enjoys learning Torah, and you should enjoy learning Torah, but it's not a yoke. Someone enjoys doing mitzvahs, and you should enjoy doing mitzvahs, but it's not a yoke. One morning I wake up, I'm not in the mood for learning Torah today. <laughs> I'm not in the mood for doing mitzvahs today. And you do it anyway, then it's a yoke. What are you supposed to think when you say Shema? Even when it's difficult, even when it's hard, even when I'm not in the mood. Right, 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 right. I feel this. You know what I feel is? I'm Tisha B'Av. I, I, I enjoy davening in the morning. I enjoy putting on film most of the time. Right, right. But Tisha B'av, I spend the whole morning saying the kinnus, right? I, like to, I don't like to skip. I like the whole thing. And it's very difficult. It's already you know, midday already, and I'm sweating, and I'm hungry, and I'm thirsty, right, right? And, uh, and it's David Mincha. I could David Mincha later. I want to David Mincha get it over with already. I want to David Mincha. David Mincha, I'm sweating. I put on my tefill, and I, uh, I feel, I want to get it over with already. It's hard, right? I'm saying whole morning kinnus, right, right, right? Now it's a yoke. Even when it's hard, you get to do it, Right? You're supposed to think, I'm ready to die for God. Did you ever see the swearing-in ceremonies of soldiers at the, at the Kotel? The soldiers have a swearing-in ceremony. They give them a rifle, they give them a, a Tanakh, and they say, I swear! Or, uh, and the Matsir, the, the religious group, say, I, 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 I declare. They don't say, I swear. I'm ready to give my life for God. So I've seen it a number of times, and I always have mixed feelings when I see it. I have mixed feelings. On the one hand, we have to appreciate the soldiers, right? They're protecting us. We have to appreciate them, of course, right? On the other hand, in the background, you see the people saying Shema and the Kotel. They make that proclamation one time. We make that proclamation twice a day, ready to give my life for God. 
ready to die for God. But it's really abstract when we think ready to die for God, right? How many people here are ready to give their lives for God? For the Jewish people, right? Israel is attacked tomorrow. How many people volunteer to go on the front lines? Raise your hands. <laughs> sometimes everybody, sometimes nobody, okay? It's hard to die. Let me make it easier. Who's ready to live for the Jewish people? Live for the Jewish people. Everybody raise your hand, right? Find out what you're ready to die for and live for it, right? We're not asking you to die to live, but you're supposed to be ready to die, right? But it's hard to think of that. It's so abstract. Think of something which is difficult for you to do, right, right? I'm going to do that, right, right? I'm, I'm going to do that, right, right, right? I'm ready to die, but uh, not to talk during Seder, <laughs> not to speak Lush and Horror, not to go to that, not to go to the Ben Yehuda, I can't do that, right, right, right? Reminds me of, you know, in the early days of communism, right? The commissars had to go to the peasants and explain to them how communism works. Because, you know, if you have a factory, 10% of your factory goes to Mother Russia. Okay, no problem. 10% Mother Russia. <laughs> if you have a house, 10% Mother Russia. No problem. You have a, a business, 10% Mother, Mother Russia, no problem. <laughs> right? have a chicken, 10 No, no, you can't have my chicken. <laughs> <laughs> you ready to give your, count, your house, your factory, your business, but you don't have your chicken? I don't have a house, I don't have a factory, I don't have a chicken. But a chicken I have, you can't have my chicken. Right? <laughs> a chicken I have. Right? <laughs> I'm ready to die for God, right? But not to speak Russian horror, not to do that, that I'm not. Think of something which is difficult for you to do and say, I'm going to do that when you say Shema. That's the yoke. That's carrying a yoke of heaven. Now it says Shema with the big ayin and the big dalit. In the Torah scroll, it's like the big ayin, big dalit, because ayin dalit spells aid. Aid means testimony. I'm testifying that God's king. There's one. one. Also, the ayin is to stress it. It's Shema with the ayin. There's a word called Shema with the aleph, and Shema means maybe. It's not maybe God is one, all right? And there's a big Dalit, because Dalit can be confused with the letter Resh. Resh and Dalit look very similar, right? <laughs> Rash means Acher, God, someone else. Acher, God. He's Shema, not Shema, Achad, not Achar, not Acher, not someone else. Achad. God's one, heaven above, earth below. Then we say in a low voice, Baruch Shen Kavod Machosol, the Alon Ve'ed, honor of his kingdom forever, because it doesn't say that in the Chumash. If you look in the book of Devarim, it says, Shashem Echad, V'yohavta, right, right? Who said Baruch Shein Kavod? So the Midrash says that when the Jews came, when Yaakov, before he died, he wanted to reveal the future to his children. And God took it away. Didn't want to reveal the future, and he, he lost his prophecy. So maybe one of you guys are, aren't keeping the Torah, one of you guys are not following Hashem, and they said, Shema Yisrael, Yisrael means Israel, that's the name for Yaakov. Hashem, Elokein Hashem Echad, when he heard that, he said, Baruch Shein Kavod, Machusol, the Elam, the honor of his kingdom forever and ever. We say that low, right, 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 right? You know, we do say it loud. He, we say it online on Yom Kippur because we're like the angels. And Yehoshmei Rabba Mavorach, it's actually the same thing. Yehoshmei Rabba Mavorach, Le'olam Omeyamaya, that's in Aramaic, right? It's the same as Brookshank Kavod. May his name be King Vez forever and ever. And we say that loud. Yehoshmei Rabba, that's the same thing as Brookshank Kavod. Okay, let's continue. Page 92. And you shall love the Lord your God. So, first of all, how can you give someone a commandment to have an emotion? I command you, love me. I command you, hate me. Either you love me or you don't love me. <laughs> you can't control your emotions, right? But you can focus, right? What does love mean? When you love someone, you focus on the positive, right? A mother loves her son, right? But he's a hypochondriac. He's such a nice boy, right? He's a mass murderer, but he's such a good boy, right? When you focus, when you love someone, you focus on the positive. When you hate someone, you focus on the negative, right, right? How do you come to love God? The Rambam says, look at the sunset, look at the stars, look at they see God's face, and you want to uh, come, you want to, uh, you see nature, and you want to uh, come to him, right? You want to uh, approach him. Love the Lord your God with all your heart means you're all your desires. That means you yetzara and you're evil. The, the key word in this Shema is lev. Lev, lev, lev. And I said, what does lev mean? We said before, lev doesn't just mean emotions. Lev means the mind and the emotions together, right? Your essence. With all your heart, with all your soul, even if they ask you to give your life. I'm ready to give life. All memonecha means all your possessions. That means your resources, means your money, right? Some people care more about their lives than their money. Some people care more about their money than their lives, right? right? People, you know, you know what, um, what are they called? Um, soldiers, mercenaries, right? They fight wars for money, right? right? They risk their lives. Crazy, right? right? People risk their lives for money, right? 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 You know, the hold of man, your money, or your life. Your money or your life. Your money or your life. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. <laughs> I thought you said your money or your wife. Okay. <laughs> right, right. If, by the way, if, Hol if Holman Moon puts his gun and says, you money, you know what you should do? Give him your money. Don't be a hero. It's, it's not worth it. Give him your money. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Tell you good advice, right? Right? 
And how do you come to love God? Sex in the next verse, these words I commend you today. Every day it's like it's given today. It's not an old letter that many years ago. On your heart. It doesn't say in your heart. You know why? Because your heart isn't always open. Sometimes the person's emotions are just, I, I want to get emotional, but I just can't. I'm just not able to, right? When you get an insight, an intellectual insight, put it on your heart. Another one, on your heart. On your, the day will come when the heart will open up and it'll all plop in. Right, right, right? Put it on your heart. Pile it up on your heart. And teach it to your children and speak about it. When you sit in your house, when you go in the road, when you go to sleep, when you get up, right? Constantly, right? Torah, Torah, Torah. When you go to sleep, Torah. You wake up, Torah. Doctor takes an answer. It's Tessica. Torah, right, 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 right. Right. Right? In North Samaya, you see people constantly talking. Is it true? Is it bad? Is there, is there a God? Is there a God? Talk, Torah, Torah, right? When you go on the road, right? Right? Think about Torah when you go on the road. Torah tapes, you know? You have earplugs? This is Torah. Torah tapes. When you go to sleep, when you get up, right? Here we learn the Shema should be said when you time when you go to sleep in the evening and when you get up in the morning. And tie it for a sign on your hands. And front of it between your eyes, that's a tefillin. And write it on the doorpost of your house and your gates. So it's a tefillin between your eyes and, and your hands. We have, we have four parchments, right? In four different particles, uh, cubicles, on your head, right? What do you do with your head? Think. Hopefully, think. <laughs> right, right, right? Think about these four parchments. These are four parchments are four basic texts. You have the first two paragraphs of the Shema, which talk about going out of Egypt, and God is one, and other four basic texts. Think about them one by one. Then you connect them, the knot, the back of your head. What's significant about the spot where the knot of the tefillin is biologically? What is that spot? That's where the brain connects to the spinal cord, right? The brain of the thoughts, spinal cord of the actions, right? It's not enough. You have to connect it to your actions, not just to think about it. Actions, right? Then the arms fill it. This is actions already, your muscle, right? Here, they're all four are connected. Internalize it into your heart. Motions, muscle, hand. Eyes, see, the heart desires, the hand takes, right, right? Your eyes, your mind, your spinal cord, your muscle, your heart, your hand, all dedicated to what it says in the Shema. Now, the head tefillin has, what letter is on the head tefillin? Shin. How many shins? Two. Two. How, many has, how many heads do they have? One has three and one has four. What's the symbolism over there? It says Rabbeinu B'chaya. What's the numerical value of the letter shin? 300. Shin plus shin equals? 300. Shin next to shin. What words does it spell? Shin, shin. Sheesh. What's sheesh? 606. And three heads and four heads is? Seven. Your calculators equals? 606 of seven equals? 613, right? Got it? Then we have the Dalit. The Dalit is the knot in the back and the Yud. Shin Dalit Yud. That's the name of God that's on the Mitzvah, right? Shakai. Right? Um, and tie it on, write it on your doorpost. That's the Mitzvah. What does it remind us of? Before you go out the door, think about God. Hey, should I be going to Ben Yehuda now? Maybe God doesn't want me to go there. Maybe I should go somewhere else. <laughs> go back to the base wherever she said. Right, 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 right. When you go there, you look at them and it reminds us. Right, right. The story in the Gemara about Unkelis. Unkelis. You know, the Aramaic translation of the Talmud of the Chumash is called Unkelis. Does that sound, sound like a Jewish name? Don't confuse it with Uncle Lewis. Not Uncle Lewis, but Unkelis. Right, right, right. It's a Roman name, right? He was a Roman convert. He was a, he was a uh, nephew of the Caesar, right? And the Talmud says he wanted to convert to Judaism. He asked his uncle for the advice. You know, you're a man of the world. Give me some advice. He says, find some commodity that nobody wants and buy it up real cheap. The day will come, it'll go up in price and make a lot of money. And he went and he became a Jew. He said, what do you do that for? I just followed your advice. Nobody wants the Jews. On one day, they're stuck in the Lama, right? So the story, he sent the Roman soldiers to take him back, right? And he showed them verses from the Torah, and they all converted. They didn't come back, right, right? One of the stories he says over there is they looked at the mezuzah. He says, what's that? He says, the king right, is inside his palace, and the guards are outside to guard him. Can it be any other way? The king's inside, the guards are outside, right? But our king, the Almighty, puts us inside, and he's outside to guard us. That's the mezuzah. The mezuzah symbolizes that God protects us, right? He guards us, right? To take it a little bit deeper, take it a little deeper, he wants us to be inside means we shouldn't be superficial. We shouldn't be superficial. We should have meaning, right? Inside, deep, all right? You know, today, Madison Avenue commercials are so superficial, right, right, right? Remember there was an ad many years ago from mufflers. Be a somebody, buy our mufflers. Be a somebody, buy our mufflers, right? 
Sad. You're a nobody. You don't even buy our muffins and we call you a somebody. Right? <laughs> the good muffins, by the way. That's, that's besides the point. Right? <laughs> it's all superficial. Deep, deep. Be inside. The mezuzah symbolizes we have to be inner people inside, deep, and God guards us on the outside. Write it on the doorpost. That's the first paragraph of the Shema. Now, you know the three paragraphs of the Shema are not together. This is in Devorim chapter 6. The second one is in Devorim chapter 11. And the third one is in Devorim Midbar, right? Our tradition is to put them together, right? The second paragraph of the Shema, if you look in Devarim 11, there's an introduction, paragraph before that. And it says over there that the land of Israel, a contrast between the land of Israel and the land of Egypt. In Egypt, it never rains. In Egypt, you have uh, the Nile River, which overflows its banks, right? And they dig irrigation ditches, and they bring the water to their crops. That system has a plus and has a minus. The plus is you've got a constant water supply. The minus is you got to work real hard to bring the water to your crops. But the land of Israel, you have rain. Rain has a plus, has a minus. The plus is you go to sleep and your crops say, what, don't do any work. The minus is, what if it doesn't rain? And then comes this paragraph. What does it depend on if there's rain? And it shall be. The second paragraph of the Shema. This is the first paragraph is in the singular, talking to the individual. Now we're talking to the people as a whole, in the plural. If you shall listen, truly listen to my commandments, which I command you today, to love the Lord your God, to serve Him with all your heart. That's prayer. Serving God with all your heart is in prayer, right? All your soul, giving your life for Him. I will put rain in your land in its proper time. The early rain, the later rains, right? Now we're coming to the rain season. You have an early rain, the later rain. You will gather in your grain and your grapes and your oil, right? Mitzvah to make a living, right, right? I'll put grass in your field for your animals, and you'll eat and be satisfied. From here we learn that you must feed your animals first. Someone has animals that you have to feed. You have pets, or you have, uh, you have chickens, or you have cows, right? You may not sit down to eat a meal before you feed your animals. You can drink, but you can't feed, eat first, right? Yeah, you have to be sensitive to animals. Guard yourself. Lest your heart be seduced, and you'll turn to worship other gods and bow down to them. So my Rebbe said, this verse teaches us three things. Guard yourself, lest your heart be seduced. First of all, you have a heart. You have an inner self. Second of all, your heart can be seduced. Go away from God. And third of all, you have the ability to guard yourself from seduction. You can say no. Go together. One, two, three. No! Say no! I'm not giving in. No! All right, all right. Guard yourself, lest your soul, heart be seduced. You have a heart, your heart can be seduced, and you have the power to say no, right? The rabbis compare the Eitzhara to a, uh, a highwayman that had no legs. He stands next to the highway with a big sword, come here, <laughs> take some money. Come here, come here, he just walks around, right? The other said, if you don't do that, you're going to be so, if you don't, no! Okay, <laughs> keep on going, okay. <laughs> Just say no. It says, the rush says, yell at the sea of lust and it will dry up. Just say no and it dries up, right? You have the power to say no. Try it. One, two, three. No, no. Guard yourself lest your heart be seduced, right? And worship other gods about down to them, right? And God will be angry at you and he'll stop the heavens and there will be no rain. The earth will not give forth its produce and you'll be lost quickly from on the good land which your God has given you. And this prophecy was fulfilled twice in our history. We were thrown out of the land twice. And you know, there's no guarantee we're here permanently this time. We hope so. We pray so. No guarantee. Before the Six-Day War, it looked like there's going to be another Holocaust, right? All the Arab nations were about to attack us. The Western world turned their backs, right? Uh, the Prime Minister of Israel, uh, you know, uh, uh, he addressed the people. He broke out in tears before the Six-Day War. And then it was a miracle. You know? It wasn't the Six-Day War, by the way. Did you know that? It was a one-morning war. It was a one-morning war, you know? They preempted. They went to Egypt. They bombed all the planes on the ground. Right? And then they went to Syria, bombed all the planes on the ground. Then to Lebanon, right, right, right. And they didn't tell each other. They tried. And after that, they, they tried. For whatever reason, they weren't able to tell each other about it. Right, 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 right. right. The other five days was just mop-up, right? There was, no, there was no Air Force. There was no Air Force. No Air Force. We had the Israel's only one Air Force, right? So you'll be lost quickly from the good land which God has given you, right? So Moshe Rabbeinu, in the end of the Torah, Hazin Vashamayim, who are the witnesses that we have to keep the Torah? The heaven and the earth, right? And who throws the first rocks when a guy gets stoned? The witnesses have to throw the rocks. If you don't keep the Torah, then the heaven will not give forth its rain, and the earth will not give forth its produce, right? But if you do keep the Torah, then you'll have rain in this land and its produce, right? Right time, that's the idea. And put these words on your heart and on your soul. Tie it on a sign on your hands and between your eyes. And teach it to your children. Speak about them when you sit in your house, when you go over the road, when you go to sleep, when you get up. Torah, Torah, Torah. 
and write them on the doorposts of your house. And the rabbis say, if you have tefillin on your arm and head, you used to wear them all the time, by the way, you have mezuzah on your doorposts, you have tzitzis, we have the tzitzis in a minute, tzitzis on your garment, we assume this person will not sin, because he has all these reminders. Says the rabbi, and these are the angels that help us to prevent us from sinning. We have a reminder. You see your, your tzitzis, you see the tefillin, you see the mezuzah, right? Reminds you. In order to increase your days and the days of your children on the land which God swore to your ancestors give you, like the days of heaven on the earth, that means for all eternity. And now we come to the third paragraph, page 95, right? And there we have tzitzis, right, right? What's tzitzis? Fringes, right? If you see a guy with this thread hanging out of his shirt, what do you do? You pull it out, right, 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 right? What do threads do, right? It doesn't do anything, right? It doesn't keep you warm, it's not an ornament, it strings, you pull it out, right? Right? But if you want to remember something, what do you do? You tie a string around your finger to remember, right? Then you got a string around the other finger to remember what it was you wanted to remember. I forgot what I wanted to remember. I forgot what I remember something, right? <laughs> the scissors is a reminder. And God spoke to Moshe saying, Speak to this, you speak to this, you put upon scissors fringes on the corners of their garment for all generations. So there's no obligation from the Torah to wear scissors. Did you know that? If you're wearing a four corner garment, you gotta put tzitzis on. If you don't wear a four corner garment, you don't have to. The rabbis say put on a four corner anyway, right? We have to do it anyway. It's a mitzvah from the Torah. The rabbis say put on a mitzvah, but, but you don't, it's not a requirement from the Torah. Because the tzitzis is the idea, it's the badge of the king. You have to do it because you're proud. I'm proud. I wear a kippah because I'm proud of being a Jew. I wear tzitzis, I'm proud of being a Jew, right? So there can't be an obligation. It has to be you doing it on your own. Um, and put it on the corners of the tzitzis a blue thread. Now, this is not any blue thread. The oral tradition says it has to be the the dye of a uh, fish called the chilazon, right? A mollusk called the chilazon, chilazon. And since we lost the tradition, not the Mediterranean, we don't know what it is. We don't have that. We don't have the blue today. The blue and white are two separate mitzvahs, right? There was a Hasidic rabbi called the Regina Rebbe that lived about 200 years ago who claimed that he discovered it. And his Hasidim until today make it. You see blue that people buy in the streets is from the Regina Rebbe. But the vast majority of the rabbis disagree with him. Today, there are other opinions on blue and the Masada. You know, the, the, the defenders of the Masada had this with blue, all right? They found it there, and I can analyze that. Anyway, so the blue is the color of the sea, and it's a reflection of the sky, which is a reflection of God's throne. It reminds you of God. The blue is a heaven, heavenly, right? And uh, it should be for you, it's just that you shall see them, right? That's why it's customary to where you sit hanging out. You're not required to. You don't have to. I mean, many people, you see it when you put it on. It's not required to wear it hanging out, but I give you good advice. You wear your tzitzis hanging out your entire lifetime, and one time you're allowed to do something wrong, and you look at your tzitzis and you don't do it, it's worth it, right? Story in the Gemara of a guy went to a prostitute, he saw his tzitzis, hit him in the face, he ran away. <laughs> Reminder, right? Tzitzis are very special. You know, there's a yeshiva called Orachayim, right nearby here, a yeshiva for Svartim, right? And he, this guy, Rabbi Elbaz, he gets juvenile delinquents from the streets, right? And he gets them to... So the guy came there, there. As soon as they come in, the first thing, keep on, sits his twilling, right? Everything, right? So he bought a pair of sits right when he first there. He's there for a week. He says, Rabbi, I can't take it. I'm leaving. Okay, he's leaving. Starts packing his stuff. Comes to the sits. You know, on the one hand, you know, it was very special to him. He didn't want to throw it out. On the other hand, he didn't want to wear it, right? right, right, right. He couldn't decide, should I take the sits? Should I not take it? Take it? Not take it? Couldn't decide. You know what? I'll decide in the morning. Or go to sleep. That whole night, he couldn't sleep. Should I take this? Should I not? Could I? The morning, okay, Rabbi, I'm staying in Yeshiva. <laughs> Stay in Yeshiva. <laughs> Miracle of Sitzes. Miracle of Sitzes, right, right. And you shall see them and remember the commandments of God. How do you remember the commandments of God by Sitzes? What's the numerical value of Sitzes? Sadik is 90. Yud is 10. That makes 100. Sadik is 90. Yud is 10. 200. How much is tough? 400. 400. That makes 600. And how many strings are there? Eight. How many knots? Five. Get out your calculators. Five plus eight equals? 13, that's in the Gemara, right? Do you remember the, and you should see them and remember all the commandments of God and do them and don't go astray after your heart. Remember the heart, right? After your eyes. Heart over here means bad thoughts. It means atheism. And after your eyes means uh, immorality. Which you go after them in order to remember and do all my commandments and you should be holy to God. Now, holy to God is a very high level. You look in the Messiah with Charlotte, the passing the just, the holy is the high, one of the last chapters of holiness, right? Are we talking about someone who's going into idolatry and atheism and immorality and we're telling him, put on sisters, you'll be holy? Or are we talking about somebody who's holy and we're saying, if you don't wear sisters, you're gonna... they're both true. You can jump from a very high level and you can fall from a very high level. Both true. I am Hashem who took you out of Israel. When you say the last paragraph, you're supposed to think, I'm fulfilling a positive commandment in the Torah to remember the going out of Egypt. I am Hashem who took you out of the land of Egypt to be to you for God. Ani Hashem And we say emes. Emes is really the word on the next bracha, but we say emes, that's like amen. 
not supposed to separate. If you're, you can't answer Amen, so you fulfill the commandment. Now, we have in the Haggadah a discussion from the Gemara Brachis. There was one opinion that said that when you daven my riv in the evening, you don't say last paragraph of Shema. Why? Because it says you should remember the going out of Egypt all the dates of your life. All the days seem to imply only during the daytime, not at night. And when do we have a mitzvah of tzitzis? Only during the daytime. You see them, right? Night, you know, if you, you know, theoretically, you could take your tzitzis. As soon as it gets dark, you take off your tzitzis. It's a good, good idea to keep them on until you go to sleep, but you can take them off if you want to, right? If you put on tzitzis at night, you don't make a bracha. You know, you know, we wear a towel at night, you put it on before the sunset. You can't, can't make a bracha at night, right? No mitzvahs at night, right? And since tzitzis at night is not at night, and remembering the dark is only during the day, the last paragraph was, which should not be said in my room, according to one opinion. And Ben Zoma disagreed. We have in the Agata, he learned the Montisco to remember the God. Oh, it says all the days of your life. All the days of your life means even during the daytime, right? And the rabbis say, all the days of your life, the Havi the most Hamashiach. What does that mean? When Mashiach comes, right? It says in the verse, you will no longer say, blessed is God who took us out of Egypt, but blessed is God who, who gathered us from the four corners of the earth. The miracles of Mashiach will be so great, they will overshadow the miracles of, of going out of Egypt. So I would think that when Mashiach comes, you don't say Shema anymore. Therefore, it says, all the days of your life, even when Mashiach comes, the Mosa Mashiach. What does it mean literally, the the Mosa Mashiach? All the days of your life to bring the Mashiach. Our goal in this world is to bring the Mashiach. Hashem Elokech HaEmes, so we finish the Shema. Tomorrow, Mr. Hashem will continue with the Shemona Esra. Any questions? Comments? You had a question before? Where is, where is the concept of Kippah come from? Kippah? Yeah. The Gemara. The Gemara says that, uh, that uh, Yore Malka, you know, Yiddish with Yamaka, if you cover your head, you'll have fear of God, right? But it's a Jewish custom, right? Right? But today it's become it's such a Jewish custom that it identifies it as a Jew. It's a badge of honor, right? Right. You, if, I'll put it this way: If you don't wear a yarmulke, you're not a goy. But a goy doesn't wear a yarmulke. Okay. <laughs> you, you identify with the Jewish people with the yarmulke. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm.